What's up everyone? So this is a highly anticipated video just because I know one, medical students are starting up, first year students, second year students, everyone's going to be starting up again soon. And so I know a lot of people will be getting into Anki. But more important than that, it's very uh, interesting that Anki has add-ons. So to know which add-ons are the best, uh, and that's what this video is all about. What are the top five best Anki add-ons that I use. So before we start, here are some disclaimers. The This video is going to be about my personal opinion, what I think are the five best add-ons that everyone should have. Uh, and I've made videos on many of these add-ons before, and for each of these I will link them above um, as we pass them through this video. I run on Anki 2.1, so everything you're going to be hearing from me is related to Anki 2.1 add-ons. So if you're not running Anki 2.1, this may be different for you. Um, another disclaimer is that too many add-ons is not a good thing. I know some people have like 80 add-ons and that's actually horrible because they interact in re random ways and sometimes they will actually make your studying way less efficient than it needs to be. So just remember that too many add-ons is not a good thing and that's why I've boiled it down to five that I really think will help all of you. And these are the only five that I usually use on a very consistent basis and I've been able to use them very, very effectively. And I think they pretty much will help you up your Anki game to the point that it's conducive to your learning, but not detrimental, which can happen when you have too many add-ons. Um, the add-on codes for each of these add-ons will be posted down below, so make sure you just use those, and I'll also link the place where you can learn more about the add-on. And um, please watch the entire video if you're going to add an add-on, because the last thing I want is for people to just randomly add the add-ons and then have their Anki mess up and not know why it's doing that. So this video is going to explain what this add-on does, and in the process, hopefully teach you about it. So that way, when you download it, you use it effectively and it doesn't screw up your Anki. And last but not least, I want to give props to um, Glutaminate, who he's a guy who makes a lot of these add-ons. He's such a smart guy for making these. So because they're so useful and because he makes them freely accessible, I just wanted to give him a shout out because I really do appreciate that. So thank you, Glutaminate. And without further ado, let's get into it. So starting with Add-on five that I would recommend everyone have is this thing called pop-up dictionary. And the way this add-on works is basically it allows you to reference other cards that may be relevant to the current card that you're studying. So I have a picture here to show you. This card says, what is the effect of BNP slash ANP on the GFR? And let's say you forgot what BNP was. Using this add-on, if you highlighted BNP, it would basically just show you all the other cards that have the word BNP in it. And so that way you can be like, oh, what is BNP? Oh, this is what it is. And this is how it affects GFR. And like that way you have all the information from one card that then connects to all the other cards. So kind of make a cohesive map. So let me just show you this in practice now. So now here's a sample card. It says PCP is a blank to the blank receptor. So this is an antagonist to the NMDA receptor. But let's say you were like, what the heck is NMDA? How do I even do that? So what you'll do is now just highlight NMDA. And when you do that, you can actually see other cards that have NMDA in it. And now you can actually see like, oh, look, a campersate also modulates NMDA receptors. Or, oh my god, look, I have memantine, which is also an NMDA receptor antagonist. So you can make a lot of these connections that you may not have made otherwise. So, you know, PCP and memantine actually have the same mechanism of action. And you may not have known that if you hadn't been able to pull something like this up. Number four add-on is called Enhanced Main Window. And it literally does what it says. It enhances your main window so it actually looks something like this. And I'll walk you through what mine looks like, but I want to know, want you to know that um, I've made previous videos on this before, so if you check out some of them, you'll be able to find more information on this. But let me just walk you through what it looks like now in my Anki. So here's the enhanced main window add-on. Basically, if you download it, your main window will look something like this. And I really like this, and I'm not going to go over all of it. I'm going to go over the three big ones I use. I use this part a lot, this column, the mature slash young. So you'll see that I'm studying for step 2CK right now, and about 3,200 cards are matured and 4,800 are young. So that tells me about 40, 60, I have a lot more young cards, so I clearly need to learn those. So I can be like, okay, um, maybe I should kind of focus a lot more on the young cards, try to mature them and try to basically fill in my gaps. The other column I like to use is basically this column because it tells you pretty much the total number of cards you have in this deck. So this deck has about 16,000 cards, my step two deck. And on top of that, I've only pretty much matured slash made some young. So I only have about 8,000 and that's because the rest are suspended. So I know in my head, I still need to unsuspend about 8,000 more cards so I can factor that into my studying because going into the test, I wanna make sure I've covered all of the material. And so this gives me a way to plan that. And the last column I love is this one. It tells me how many cards are due tomorrow, right? And the good part about this is I, when I'm doing cards, I care not just about today, but I care about the next day, right? And 673 is actually really low. Usually I can do about a thousand cards a day. So I'm like, okay, 673, 
173 means that I can add a lot more cards today, like add new cards, because tomorrow, then I can actually hit about 1,000 and try to do what I want to do. On the other hand, if this had said like 1,200, then I'm like, I should really not add any more cards because I know 1,200 is already way above my limit. So I'm just going to kind of hold off on adding new cards today. And basically, this column allows me to plan for that. So number three of my favorite add-ons is actually the review heat map. And this actually just came out for Angi 2.1. So it's really, really useful. And again, Glutaminate made it, which means it's phenomenal. Um, but the whole point of this is that it's a more condensed version of the enhanced main window add-on, so the one we just went over. The thing about this is every day is a box, and in that box it's color-coded. Darker versions of the color imply you did more cards. And basically each box tells you how many cards you did that day and um, the date you did them. And I personally really like this because it gives me access to my own data. So let me talk a bit about that as I show you how I use it. The other note that I'm going to make is I actually have a whole video that discusses this add-on and I'm going to link it right up here. And it basically walks you through what this add-on is and how it works. So check it out right up here. Uh, but I'm also going to show you right now briefly. So when you download this add-on, it'll appear at the bottom. And it's basically a more concise version of the enhanced main window add-on. But the reason I like it so much is because it has all of your data for the past. And that's really useful because, as I said, <laughs> I was studying for step one in January. And so this has all the information about January and how hard I was going every day. And that's really useful. You know, maybe I'm not studying anymore and I can look back and be like, wow, that's what I'm capable of doing. And right now, I haven't really started studying for step two yet, but you'll see that I still have information about how many cards I've done today, how many cards I did yesterday. And basically, it tells you how many cards you did, and it makes it a different color. It also tells you your daily average, and it tells you your longest streak, if that's motivating for you. But again, I like this because it's my it's a condensed version of the enhanced main window add-on, but also more importantly than that, it gives me access to my own data and I'm a very data driven person. So it's really nice for me to be able to go back and be like, wow, look, the day before step one, which was on Tuesday, I was able to review 2000 cards and that's really cool to see the temporality. And then you'll see, I stopped doing Yonki for like a week. Cause I was like, I can't deal with this right now because I want to be done. And then you'll see, I started restarting. And at that point I was doing very few cards, but I was trying to get back into the groove. And as I restarted, you'll see I slowly built back up into about a thousand cards a day. But I'm sure as I hit step two, um, you know, I hit my stride. I'm sure I'll get to the pace that I was at for step one. But yeah, I like this. I like this add-on because of that ability to look at your data. Number two, this is such a good add-on. It's called Speed Focus Mode, and this is what revolutionized basically the about ability for me to kind of go above and beyond um, just studying Anki for a short amount of time. And basically what this add-on does is when you see a card, it makes a ding and you can kind of automate the times at which that ding happens. So you can make it so that you say after five seconds, make a ding and the bell will ring. And then after seven seconds, it will automatically show you the answer. So this add-on basically speeds up the rate at which you can do your cards. And you'll see here that when I wasn't doing my step, uh, studying, sometimes quantity is a little bit more important than quality because step one is so vast that you need to make sure you're doing all of your cards. And so if I had a lot of cards, it would be tough to get through them if I couldn't get through them efficiently. So I could actually get through about 1600 cards sometimes in about 150 minutes. And the reason for that is because this add-on, which I had been using pretty th thoroughly um, leading up to step, I got used to it and eventually I was able to do it very effectively. And it's helpful in certain cram situations. I'm not gonna advocate for this add-on all the time. I think that's a horrible idea because sometimes you should do new cards and understand the concepts. But at the same time, it is important sometimes to prioritize quantity over quality, especially on a test like the USMLE, where believe it or not, you will get a lower score on step one, step two, whatever it is, if you don't know a little bit of everything than if you know something really well. Right? So what I mean by that is on these tests, if you don't know cardiology at all, but you know all the other subjects really well, you will probably not do as well as if you just didn't know the other subjects as well, but you at least knew something about cardiology. And the whole gist of that is because they wanna, they'll want they test you on everything and everything is interconnected. So you should know a little bit about everything. And so this add-on really helped me focus and zone in on my speed when I needed to. But at the same time, when you don't need speed, and that's a lot of times, especially when you're learning new content, when you're going through stuff for the first time, don't use this add-on. But when you do need it, use this add-on. I'm not going to show you how it works because it actually does take a bit of time. I've made a separate video on this add-on itself. It's like it's eight minutes long. Go ahead and watch it. I'm going to link it at the top of this video. It'll pop up. Click on that and you can see basically how I use this add-on to do a bunch of cards uh, effectively. Last but not least, the number one add-on that all of you should use the frozen fields add-on. It saves so much time, especially when you're making new cards, which you should. I know a lot of people rely on pre-made decks and they're great. I use them. 
But but believe it or not, about 50% of my cards are my own cards. I make them based on what I learn. I make them based on new world questions. I make them based on the resources. I make them based on what attendings tell me. Making new cards is phenomenal because it gives you your own way to synthesize the material and gives you a first pass at the material that you don't get with pre-made decks. So with that being said, if you're going to make your own new cards, I would suggest you use this add-on. It's called the Frozen Fields add-on. Basically what it does is when you're making your cards, you can have, um, you know, you'll have your first and your closed deletion at the top, and then you have the extra column. And when you click these buttons, the pretty much the star buttons, it'll freeze that section. So I'm going to show you how it works. I've also made an entire video on this add-on because I love it that much. So I'm going to link that video right up there too. Watch it. I suggest you watch the whole thing. But for right now, if you just want a glimpse of it, let me show you. All right, so I've already made a card here, and you'll see that I made a question and an answer, and this is actually a pre-made card, so credits to whoever pre-made this card. But notice how below it, I added in a bunch of information, um, and basically the whole joint gist of this is, so when I press this button, when I press it and it's highlighted blue, it'll save this. And when I unpress this one, it won't save this part. So now, what I usually do here is I type in all the supplementary information related to the concept. So in here, the concept is otitis media versus otitis media with effusion. Otitis media usually has signs of inflammation. Otitis media with infusion usually doesn't. It just has fluid behind the ear, right? So usually you don't have um, inflammatory response, right, without signs of active infection. So when I press add, that card that I just made will get added, but this card stays put. So by having this big chunk of information, I can now create a bunch of cards just from this information. So for example, will you, um, you know, what presents with fever? Otitis media or otitis media with effusion? And by having this here, I can now type in otitis media uh, is the one that presents with fever and make that my closed deletion. And by having this here, the supplementary information for this background question is still there, but um, I can now just keep making a bunch of cars with just this information. So it saves a lot of time when you're making cars. But as I said, if you want more context into this, watch um, the video I made on it, uh, which is the Frozen Fields add-on video. I'm going to link it right up there. So um, that's the Frozen Fields add-on. The whole gist of this presentation was to show you the five add-ons I would suggest all of you download. Don't download more than 10, please, because when you download too many add-ons, I know this because I learned it the hard way, your efficiency actually plummets. It's the same thing with um, kind of like studying. You can study only a certain amount per day, but if you were to study like 24 hours a day, you would not work efficiently. Um, just like how if you had too many add-ons, they actually start overlapping and they're just useless. So I've gone through a lot of add-ons and these five personally, I think give me the tools to do a ton of Anki, make a lot of cards effectively, uh, learn effectively, and really up my ability to be productive using Anki. So I hope you found them helpful. Let me know what you think uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So like, comment, share, subscribe as usual, and thank you for watching. Peace.